Welcome back. It's a new season of From the Ground Up. I'm your host, Pete Forster. Last season, we gave you a series of deep dives into different aspects of the industry. We talked about the evolving role of the athlete with Victor Cruz, dissected the current state of high fashion sneakers at Barney's New York, and listened to women in the industry to hear about what we can all do better. But this season, we're going to take it even further. We're going to talk everything from sustainability to how running culture has evolved the industry, and even look at how politics impacts how we lace up our kicks. But before we get there, we want to start from the very beginning. So this week, we're going back to basics. On this episode of From the Ground Up, we have Tan France from Queer Eye, who's going to give us our pick of his favorite kicks and attack me with some scissors. I'm going to sit down with George Ocampo so you can get advice from both of us for starting a sneaker collection on two very different budgets. And we're going to head to Stadium Goods with Christina Caradonna to answer those burning questions all first-time sneaker shoppers have, like, why are Yeezy so coveted? And should you really play basketball in retros? Stay tuned. We are here at Stadium Goods with Christina Caradona from Trou Rouge, blogger, influencer, style extraordinaire. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So we're gonna find you a new pair of shoes today. Yes, can we you, are. Can you sort of talk to me about the types of shoes that you wear already? Uh, I mean, I wear, I feel like I wear a lot of just like basic, plain shoes, nothing okay. too flashy, especially like the flashy part. And then, I don't know, I wear a lot of Supergas and then Feus, if, if, if that's how you pronounce it. Okay, so like canvassy. Yes, I would like a lot of canvassy stuff, a lot of things that like can kind of like look good with like dresses or jeans or whatever. Do you ever wear uh, Converse's? I do. Okay. I used to wear a lot of Converse as a kid. I wear Nike. I do some Pumas as well, but I always do the basic stuff. Yeah. I never like go too crazy with colors. So when we're looking for a pair of shoes today, do you want to branch out or do you want to stay with this white canvas thing you got going on? No, I want to I want to branch out. I want to like see what else is out there. There's a lot out here. I, apparently. Let's go see. <laughs> So the first pair of shoes I want to show you is these white Levi's Air Jordan 4s because okay. they have that, they're, they're denim yeah. and they're white. So they have that sort of like white canvasy thing going on uh -huh. while at the same time they have more of a heft than the shoes that you're used to wearing. These are the Space Jam shoes. They're black. I thought they were going to be more colorful. Would a shoe like this ever be interesting to you? Um, this is like everything. No, I like this because awesome. it is, I, I mean, yeah, but like it still has this basic sort of like feel to it. It's sure. a little canvassy. I feel like the sure. sole is like the only thing that'd be like too much, but right. otherwise I like everything else. I mean, the laces are kind of interesting, but yeah, I mean, it's still a cool shoe. And it's, uh, this I feel like is wearable. I can wear this with like a dress. Cause okay. I like things where I could wear it with other stuff as well. Now that I'm starting to sort of understand more about what you're looking for, let's go over and check out the Yeezys. Okay. So this is the Yeezy case. Yes. Um, so these are knit. Oh, so they're made out of like cloth, like. Yeah, they use uh, the Adidas Prime Knit technology. So everything that you're seeing is basically one piece of yarn. Oh. Yeah. All right. So maybe that's why they're so great. <laughs> well, they're so great um, because they're made out of hype. You know, these are yeah. Kanye's shoes. And honestly, there were shoes just like this um, before Yeezys really took off. And they off. didn't get as like much like Not exposure. Nearly. No. But because it's Kanye. Correct. There's this other pair of Yeezy sneakers that are called the Calabasas Power Faces. See, these ones I really like. Okay. What these ones I like. Can you talk to me about what you like about them? Okay, so I like these because they're simple, but yeah. they're still cool. Sure. And I feel like it's kind of like getting a little bit out of my like box of just like just wanting to wear these types of shoes. Right. Um, and I like Adidas as well. How do you feel about them in a different color, like gray? I like this color too because they're a little different. I mean, I feel like I might not be able to wear it with like as many things okay. because I feel like this color is neutral. Sure. I like the neutral color, That's yep. just why I'm wearing these ones. Okay, before we make a decision, I want to just look over at the Nike wall. So I want to show you this one collection, okay. totally out of left field. These three come to Garçon Air Max 180s. Okay. So these, these are, are pink, they're suede, this is like the opposite of everything that we talked about. They were very 80s. Okay. Yeah, I think they're really fun. But one shoe that I do wear okay. are the Cortez. Really? Yeah, I actually have a lot of Cortez. In France, like a lot of the kids wore them. It's like a really popular shoe. And sure. then 
I don't know, they're just, they're just comfortable. They kind of go with everything, and then yeah. you can wear them with dresses. Is it one of those shoes that's sort of like... It's a very European shoe, and it, I think. It, you were introduced to it as a kid, and so it yes. was forever yeah. like... Yeah, I was introduced to it as a kid. One of my best friends, Celine, always wore them. See, I think I like these more than these ones. But these ones I'd get dirty, these ones I'd kind of wear with everything. Sure. These ones I really, really like. I like this little, I like this color because it's less bubble gummy. Sure. So out of everything that we saw today, yes. what would you pick if you had to? These are the sort of top three that we talked about. I like the Adidas shoe. Okay, why? I like them because I like the height, okay. I like the leather of it. I like that they're a little different sure. and they're like kind of like going into the right direction of me doing something a little more adventurous. Out of your comfort zone. Out of the comfort zone. Yeah. And I feel like, I, and I like things I can wear every day. Sure, and these you can definitely wear every day. Yeah, these ones for sure. I gotta ask you, how much is the fact that it's Kanye shoes, how much did that factor into your decision? I try to make it about the shoe and okay. not about the, the whoever's behind the shoe sure. and just like about like, oh, this is a cool shoe. So, what would you say if we got you these pairs of shoes today? Wait, I get these for real? Yeah. No, today? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, really. Oh my god, I'm like, well, give me the more expensive one. <laughs> now I get to be cooler. Cooler. Thank you so much. I'm here with George Ocampo, and this is The List. The challenge today is we are going to each build a sneaker collection from scratch, five pairs of shoes, one list at $250 is the budget, and the other list is $2,500. When you sat down to make your list of five pairs of shoes for $250, were you expecting it to be as difficult as it was? Yeah, like, there's so much, like, that you could spend on now, like, finding five pairs of shoes at $250. I mean, it's also very doable. Right. If we're talking about sales and stuff, there's a lot of classics that you can kind of pick from a lot of, like, of these timeless shoes that you know, you kind of always want your rotation. So there's a lot of shoes like that, I guess, that you could fill in. But even at 250, you gotta be, you gotta be keen on your game. So what did you find? So first I had the Reebok Workout Plus. Second was the Vans Slip-On. Next we got the Converse One Star, pretty popular this year. Then we have the Adidas Alpha Bounce, something a little to change it up. And then this last one was kind of a little left field. I put a Fila Disruptor 2 in there. Two of those, I'm like totally on board with you. Workout Plus, Slip On. The other three, do you think that those three shoes are like yeah. that foundational? I mean, a Converse One Star, that's like super wearable. And then you could also kind of jazz it up without having to spend, or you know what I mean? Like, so like there's like a lot of collab sneakers and there's like sure. a lot of GRs and the Converse One Star is like one of those shoes where I feel like you can get a GR and like that can still stand out on its own. And I feel like that's kind of important in having a collection, you know, you want to have some shoes that are super wearable all the time, which the Converse One Star is, but you have that added element of like, you know, there's a little extra flavor in there. So what about the Fila Disruptor attracted you to putting it on your list? Once again, like, so when I was thinking of my list, I wanted to like have a, a diverse range of shoes and the Fila Disruptor kind of fills this space where you get something really trendy, but something not too forward. It's kind of approachable because it's still like this sort of like classic dad looking Fila shoe. But it's also been super trendy lately just because like chunky shoes are all in and like this is a shoe that kind of definitely fits into that trend without taking away from, without it being looked at as any sort of like lower brand, you know what I mean? So I started off with an Adidas Pro model, then a Vans Authentic, Adidas Stan Smith, Air Force One High, and a Cortez. I feel like all those are like classic, wearable, foundational shoes. So on the other end of the spectrum, we have our $2,500 list. So first I had the Adidas Raph Simmons Oswego 3. Second, I have the Air Jordan 1 in Royal, Nike SB Futura Uncle Dunk. Now the next shoe is the Nike React Element 87. And my last shoe, also kind of a brand new shoe, is the Adidas Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. Were there any shoes that didn't make the list because they were gonna end up pushing you over. Absolutely, like what? I mean, personally, I love the Cause 4. I think that's like a shoe. I'm surprised that that wasn't on your list. Because it's just too pricey. Where are they now? They're like, we're looking at like 14 on, on StockX, okay. which is a little lower than we were seeing before, but still like 14. Yeah. I mean, we had 2,500, 14 is like more than half of that. Like My five were, I started 
pretty low, actually. So um, I did the Antisocial Social Club Vans Skate Highs. Come de Garçon, Chucks, black, the big heart, obviously. Black and red ones, because that to me is like the staple shoe, if not the uh, black cement threes. Again, the staple shoe. And that brings us only to about $1,000. And so I did the 1500 with the Supreme Air Force Ones because I wanted an Air Force One, but since it's building a sneaker collection from scratch, I wanted it to be a basic colorway. I would have done um, the a Cold Wall Air Force Ones if I could, because that to me is like Best. one of the greatest shoes of all time. Um, or like Paris Dunks, but like. See, that was a shoe that I like, if I, no budget. Freddy Krueger's. Right there. Yeah. Freddy Krueger, you're speaking my language there. Yeah. That SB Dunk era. Yeah, that's true. Right. Speaking of which, I think your collection sounded like it was a little on the expensive side. I know that like you kind of saved a lot of money, but it still sounds it might've been over 2,500, dude. Yeah, it, I was over by $57. That was not the assignment, Pete Forrester. I made the assignment. <laughs> I assigned the assignment. I know, and I stuck to it. I was even under budget. Dude, I saved like a hundred bucks. Like maybe so I could- a hundred dollars on the yeah. table? I could probably loan you some at this point. So you guys heard our lists. Drop a comment down below and let us know what you thought of our list, and then give us your own list of five pairs of shoes for $250. I'm here with Tan France of Queer Eye. We are at the Express on 51st and Madison. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Don't worry about it. I was worried that you were about to ask me what the address was and I don't know. <laughs> it's 51st and Madison. 51st and Madison. We think. So you meet guys, you meet all sorts of people when they are like moving into an expansion in their lives. Yeah. When you bring sneakers in, a lot of times I see that you're bringing in white low tops. Always. Can you tell me why you choose that? Okay, I've been wearing white low tops for about 15 years. Um, they go with pretty much everything. Sure. It's a neutral, it's an easy shoe to wear. So a lot of the guys that we help on the show don't actually feel comfortable with style. They've right. never really gotten used to pairing a shoe with a certain look. So a white sneaker goes with pretty much anything. There are certain times when a white sneaker isn't isn't the best, for example, your wedding. Maybe don't wear your white sneaker. But other than that, you can wear it to work, to the office, you can wear it with a pair of shorts, you can wear it with jeans on a weekend to go shopping. Like It is just a crisp shoe that looks like you've made an effort without really trying so hard. It's sure. an easy, easy throw on. So when you're meeting somebody and you're giving them the sneaker for the first time, yeah. what are some of the hesitancies that you see and how do you sort of chill them out? So the only concern I've had is a couple of times when they've uh, said that it's just, it's such a stark contrast to what they've had before. They usually go for a performance sneaker. Sure. However, I just, uh, the, the way I win them over is by saying a performance sneaker really doesn't go with much of anything. If you had to choose, not just like a white low top, but like yeah. a brand or a particular model, yeah. one sneaker for a stranger who has never gotten into sneakers before. Adidas. Okay. I know you guys pronounce it differently. Adidas. So um, on our show, you may have noticed I give almost every guy a pair of Stan Smiths. Yes. Stan Smith, in my opinion, I've been wearing Stan Smith since I was a kid, and they go with so many locks. I could they go with, again, jeans, trousers, um, shorts. So it's a really good basic. But then if you wanted to get a little more experimental, I love an NMD. Um, yeah, I, I, there are options of, of Adidas shoes that go from super basic to super high performance. Sure. So I think that they cover every great sneaker. Yeah. I know that Nike's amazing, but I'm an Adidas boy. Yeah. So if you had someone wearing a pair of sneakers yeah. come into Express, yeah. how would you dress them up? I would dress them up how I would dress up any of our candidates on the show because we use white sneakers so often. So I'm wearing a pair of um, Express white sneakers right now and they're a similar shape, they're reminiscent of a Stan Smith, sure. so it's a basic shape. So I would put them in a suit. I would love to see a suit moment with a pair of sneakers. I would love to see a pair of jeans with their sneakers. I would do exactly what I would do with any one of our heroes because these guys have great options for day to night. They call it nine to night here. Right. Um, so I think that these could go from work to an evening event. Perfect. Easily. You are known for a crop top sweatshirt. I love a crop top. I love a crop moment. If you can do it for me. Okay, I right can. Now. However, there's a point where I crop. I'm a high cropper. Okay. Do you mind a high crop? crop? Crop the way that you would crop. Okay, my worry is, can I go up this? Uh, yeah, this okay, so my worry is, is that I might cut your t-shirt or the mic. Let's hope we don't do either. The t-shirt's okay, let's not cut the mic. 
Okay, we can do this. So I actually did this on camera um, for Jonathan yeah. for next season, uh -oh. and it, and I just saw that it didn't make air. Oh, shit. so I'm very upset about it. So I'm glad that we get a moment to do it now. Jonathan's gonna be very jealous. So normally I do a much neater crop. <laughs> And it's usually steamed and it looks great. Well, but... it's steamed for me from just because it's a hot day. <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Beautiful. Okay, okay, and if you're cropping, then I do prefer that a that. Three quarter. Yeah, just to balance it out. Yeah. I love a high crop. And then if you're feeling really daring, just don't wear a t shirt under me. And get some like long nipple rings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's how I wear it. Awesome. Yeah, that's how easy it is. Bye, y'all. Bye. This is just, uh, this is too short. That's it for this episode of From the Ground Up. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also in the comments down below, let us know what you think are the top five sneakers for any collector.